Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I'm sitting here with A.R. Hayes from A Convict's Thoughts. And we're going to be discussing the Idaho 4 case. We're going to be doing it in chronological order. And we're going to start from the very beginning. So we're going to try to keep these videos about 25 minutes long. So let's just jump right into it. A.R., why don't you tell me what you think about Brian Koberger driving his car all around this crime scene at the King Roadhouse. You know what? I think it's a crazy thought. If you are that in depth within criminology, PhD program, you're going to drive your own standout white car in the middle of the darkness around and around and around a said crime scene. Right. I don't believe it. I've always focused, Lucky, I've always focused on the thought he was over there, not so much at the house, maybe around the house, to see somebody. I don't know who that is. I don't know why. Yeah. But I just I kind of felt the same feel, way. Yeah, yeah, I kind of felt and the same I know, way. We, we've torn it apart in the sense... Why would you have such a hard time parking, figuring out what you're going to do? But more so, you don't think cameras leaving the actual apartment you reside in all the way to the crime scene and then all the way the whole path they say came home that he doesn't think there's cameras? There's right. Cameras. And he would know. He and would know this. You know, that's what gets mm -hmm. me is he would know this. He would understand that you know that he was leaving these type this type of this type of evidence i kind of feel like anytime well, there's a, a a crime involved i always i kind of feel like you know the first part is we need a car you know we're gonna need a car not not i'm gonna drive my own car you know right. and let me ask you lucky just kind of a thought process i've been really stuck on you and i both know the concept of all of these street cameras and the purpose for having them they right. catch every detail about what you're doing in your vehicle, including your license plate. Anytime right. you go through a light, they snap a picture of your license plate. So in the back of my mind, I have to go to the press conferences and wonder, why are you putting out a bolo on a car, but yet you don't want to show any image of the car? You're not willing to investigate any phone calls of that exact model of a car found in another state when you probably have license plates or pictures from numerous cameras within the whole area. Right. But you don't want to utilize any of that. Why are you asking people for help on the occupants of a car? Not occupant. Occupants right. of a right. car. But then you're not going to give up any details like we're looking for license plate number X, Y, Z. Right. So well, you tell me. Thing, you think yeah. The strange ahead. thing about that whole thing is that they, you know, when they put that, when they put that bolo out, they, they had already been looking at Brian Koberger's car for over a week. So it just seems strange that they already, you know, those two officers at Washington State University, they had already found Brian Koberger's car. So they already had eyes on this car. And then Moscow PD asks for the public's help in finding this car, which they had already found. So that really didn't make and sense I to me. In my mind, because like you, we dissect everything. We try to figure out why is this not making sense. When you fit right. into a mold of living life by common sense mythology, because it really is mythology, we're never going to have perfect common sense, my friend. We just never are. That, that, yeah, but that's for sure. The, the vehicle suspect, one, leaves a lot open in the thought process within that PCA that when you ask for occupants to come forward of a certain car because you want to talk to them and get information, but then you detail it out in the PCA is vehicle suspect number one. Right. Where's two? Where's three? Right. Who do those belong to? And right. my question at the end of the day is, 
would you put it that bolo for the suspects to come in so you could talk to them? And you're talking about occupants of a car. Did anybody right. come forward? Did you have a chat with anybody in regards to that night driving around? Because I believe it's more than just Brian Koberger that they wanted to talk to that night driving around. That's just right. my opinion. But I, I, know, agree. I can't. You know, I, I can't just put my finger on the white Elantra that's seen in the Linda Land footage backing up and moving around and driving circles and say, yep, there's a person that committed this crime. I just don't I, feel that. Way. You know, and they're that they're basically that's you know, that's kind of what they're saying is their main reason that that Brian Koberger is their suspect is because of this white Hyundai that was driving around, you know, and and, and it. I just don't see it. I don't I don't feel like they make it sound when they're talking about this. They're following this white Hyundai Elantra. They make it sound like they're following this car around in real time. You know that they're basically watching this car drive around this neighborhood. Right. And and I don't think I think, and, you know, it's one of those things where it, they're basically trying to piece it together, you know, is what they're trying to do. And that's why that's why his his path of travel is so erratic and 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 messed up. Well, I'm also wondering, too, and I'm sure you've thought about it. Did they look at any other vehicles on camera? Did they try to piece anything together about vehicle movements in the area around that specific time to see if anything else odd was happening? Because if you look at the body cam footage from the Banfield while they're doing the so-called drinking and stopping little ticketing, right, in the background, right. you see a big truck and a car pass each other. Right. And at first... Many people thought those were the vehicles involved. And that's literally at about 3.30-ish in the morning. No, I believe right. it was actually even a little earlier. I think it was 3 like a.m. ish Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's even a little before what they say Koberger's car came into the neighborhood. So now, what did you do with the footage of those vehicles? Did you track those? Did you right. look? to see in the same manner what routes they took and where did they go? Did right. you talk to those people? Did did they see anything in the neighborhood odd going up? They never well, let me, ever let me, see let me ask it. you this. Let me ask you this. How many other people do you think they actually talked to? How many and how I, many how many man. potential suspects do you think that they actually talked to? I don't I don't I don't and think I know they talked to any. You're, you're racking your brain as hard as I am because it just doesn't add up that it seems like they left everybody alone so they could leave the area and go home for the break. Right. But it's almost as if they did that intentionally, like all of you kids get out of here so that we could focus ourselves on people that stay right here. Right. And what, what just so happened? Brian Koberger stayed right here here so now that's it's a, that's another well, thing it's easy yeah, yeah. that's another thing you it's know, easy he never to left. just look at him yeah you mm -hmm. know that's another thing he never he never left it just it doesn't and i mean it doesn't you, make sense to me that he's driving around in the same car that he drove to the crime scene that night doesn't leave to go right. home you know stays stays on campus uh it it just it, it just doesn't make sense well, even rewind it back to they say he left his apartment at a certain time of the morning with law enforcement right in front of his apartment handling something else. Right. Whether it be that car wreck, whatever that was that was going on. I mean, we're never going to get the true specifics of that. Right. But because they don't they don't keep reports in that area through law enforcement for some reason. But literally. Literally, as a criminal, and this is going to be the biggest crime that anybody can commit in their lifetime. I, really I, I agree. The I agree. Crime. So I so think sometimes people lose sight you... of that. You know, I do. I feel right. like sometimes people lose sight of the fact this is a quadruple homicide. This is a huge, huge crime. And I think that, you know, people have talked about it so much and, and seen so much about it. You know, I don't think that they, they, have grasped the concept that, you know, a quadruple homicide, that's a huge deal. That's, I mean, 
crime happens all the time, but that's what caught my yeah. attention immediately was that it was a quadruple homicide. And it's the emotional buildup to even be able to commit a crime like that. This isn't right. something, if it's not actual spur of the moment, happened right now in a dispute or a fight, this is talking about someone that has to walk one foot in front of the other with the chaos of emotion building up with inside of you. For someone like myself that knows what it's like to pre-plan a crime, then the emotional buildup, you get anxious. Hours right. before you know you're going to do something, you're getting anxious. You're, right. you're emotionally chaotic. And I could tell you just walking out that front door let's say i'm walking out my front door to this is the biggest moment of crime that i could possibly think or consider doing right and the first right. thing i see when i walk out my door to get into my car is law enforcement lights are blazing surrounding right. something happening right in front of my house that throws you emotionally into even more chaos and right, right. then and there most criminals would back up and say not yeah tonight. not right now this yeah, is not, not this is be. not good timing right well and, and not only that you know, but you're, when also you're leaving thinking about you know you're also thinking about when he gets to right? the crime scene there's more law enforcement there and a DoorDash driver you know i mean this and is I there's so many wrenches it. being thrown in this it's crazy well and you know, I've tried to explain this to people, and it, it is actual common sense, and I think that's why it goes over many heads, is that entire drive, no matter which way you're going to get there, you're leaving one party central college to go to another party central college right. on one of the biggest nights at the end of a semester that's going to be party central. We know parties were happening everywhere, right? but it's big game weekend. And you're telling me at 2.45 in the morning, I'm going to leave my apartment when I know all the bars are just closing. Two o'clock, last call, got to get out of here. Bars right. are closing. So I'm going to leave when every cop is going to be on DUI high alert and drive around as if I'm completely lost and just <laughs> out of my realm. Right. And then, then I'm going to have the guts to park my car somewhere. And Around the house. Me, Around the house. Right. You know, that's mind-blowing. But remember, he supposedly stalked this house. He supposedly hunted these girls. These are statements that later came out. We didn't know this at first. Right. But this was mainstream media's buildup when the arrest actually happened. So we're supposed to factor that back in. To the beginning of this crime. We have to view the beginning of the crime as what people are presenting it to be. As a right. stalker. As a hunter. Yet he's not at all capable of knowing how to park his car. He well, doesn't know, you know how to park his car. Right. Well, and you know what else is, is, is crazy is people have said, you know, because I always said, why didn't he steal a car? Why, why would he be driving around in his own vehicle? I mean, you know, why wouldn't you steal a car? But people said, well, maybe he was nervous about stealing a car. And I'm thinking this guy is on his way to commit a quadruple homicide. He, he shouldn't be worried about stealing a car. I don't you know, I, I don't understand, it, you know, it, it, if, well, this was, it, if this was planned, this is a terrible plan from the very beginning. Well, even put it outside of that. The guy's in pretty good shape. People talked yeah. about him running and, and right. methodically losing all that weight, becoming more toned, more capable of actually exerting energy. And that's why they say it could absolutely be done in the seven minute time frame. He's a healthy young man. He, why didn't he just ride a bike from his apartment to the crime scene? You're going to be less viewed. Police will not even pay attention to you. Because right. of the fact you're not DUI driving, you just ride your bike at a high speed. You could even just wear an outfit like you're exercising with a backpack of whatever you're going to change into. Yep. You just conform yourself to the darkness of the night. Your Blend white in, Hyundai you know? Elantra. Yeah, you just put a big spotlight on yourself driving a white Hyundai Elantra. Around and you around and around. 
You know, I don't know if you saw and those. You uh, I don't know if you saw those screenshots of of that Steve of the leaked Steve Gonsalves. You know, uh, uh, text messages that just came out recently. But I don't know if you saw that picture from that from the front porch of the house that actually caught the audio from the King Road house. But there's actually a picture of that security camera looking out in front of that house. And it's yep. it's I mean, that I think was going to be their best angle. Because that's the angle oh, where you're going to see this car approaching the house. But, Ed, you know, if you and I put ourselves into the stalker hunter mold that 12 times stalked at home, we would have known that camera. We'd have known right. where it was aimed at. And are you going to drive your car directly where you're? face is visible to that camera i'm sorry right if you drive into right. that neighborhood your face is on that camera and people right. say hey or how do you know there's a camera there how do because when i plan something especially when it's the biggest event that's ever going to happen in my lifetime right i find these little things because that's what's most important that's what's most important about planning a crop it's right. not about going to Walmart and buying the Dickies clothing. Oh. It's not about ordering the knife. It, none of those things is what culminates to the most important planning of a crime. Right. You have to be able to plan. How are you going to get there? How are you going to accomplish what you want to do? And then most importantly, how the hell are you going to get away right. without being right. caught? Most importantly, how do you not you get caught? You know, that, that, and, that to me is that camera, that the way that camera is set up, that camera would catch any vehicle coming in and out of that area. So well, and I think about too. think about coming in the back way. Why didn't you come in to Linda Lane entrance on the other side, right? Where you're not making these loops, you literally pull in in a straight line. Because right. if you feel like you're going to the back of the home anyway, why not just come in the perfect entrance to go to the back of the home and avoid? He had to have known that camera was there. If this was BK, he yeah. had to have known that camera was there. It's obvious. It's obvious. I, it's obvious. You know, the fact he was in his own car, but, you know, one of the things that really caught my attention right away was that uh, – you know, if you watch the Linda Lane footage, which I've watched the Linda Lane footage and I, I've done videos about it. I mean, I, I think people know how I feel about the Linda Lane footage. I, uh, But I just think it's very odd that this guy decides he's going to stop right in front of that camera and, you know, make a three point turn and, you know, make sure his car is seen in this camera. I mean, this camera only has such a wide angle of view, but this guy... Right pulls his camera dead center. I mean, he's right in the, he's right in the center of this camera, you know, and, and I just, I just wonder, always thought that was strange. Obviously, again, it comes down to how did you not figure there was a camera there? Right. You stocked the home. You, there's no way if Brian Koberger stocked and planned this and he stocked that home, he didn't drive up into those Linda Lane apartments, park his car once or twice, to figure out what was back there. What am I facing in the entirety of the area? Not right. just the home that I'm going to supposedly attack. What am I going to see within the entirety of the area? Because the key is getting in and getting out. So I have party to know house. the entirety of the Right. I have right. to know my exits. Yeah. I got to know. If something goes bad here, how do I get away over there? Right. You know that he would have had, and if it wasn't BK, if it was anybody else, they absolutely took into account the entirety of everything around, the surroundings. They would have you had, don't know there's you know, a camera sitting right there? It's right there. You can see this, it. This when seems people, like a bad – it seems like a bad situation – to walk into in the first place. It's just, you know, with all the cars parked out front, you know, you know that this yep. is a party house. There's people walking around outside. You can see it in the Banfield footage. There's plenty of people walking around outside law enforcement, right. you know? So I think that 
it was a pretty risky, if it was BK by himself, it was risky. You know, it was a very risky to go into a house you've supposedly never been into that's mm -hmm. full of people, plenty of cars parked out right. front. It just, it, 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 it almost seems like somebody who was either setting themselves up for failure or, you know, possibly somebody that didn't plan on coming out of their alive. And I, know they I've thought about both of those scenarios, too. I really right. have because, you know, if it's an actual I'm going in to do this and I might not survive it. Right. Meaning, do I feel like I'm going into a situation that's going to be a confrontational situation where it's going to be an actual battle and maybe I just don't walk away? So I've thought about that idea. I've thought right. about also, are we missing something mentally about Brian Koberger that he just – he thinks about it, and he builds this plan, but he's not capable mentally of fulfilling the plan. Like everything breaks down. But then I really have to take a step back and say, but there's no blood. There's nothing that's so detrimental. In most cases, you find blood within the car. You find the weapon. You find something. Right. Something. But right. in this case, the only things that we find are things you would never expect to find. The right. video of his car, him having his own cell phone. When in today's world, criminals have burger phones. They're easy oh, to get. You got free right. aid everywhere. Right. Everywhere. You don't yep. even have to have a phone in your own day. You know. No. So if he's stalking these women doing everything online on social media, doing all this stuff they claim, why, why would you do it on your own accounts? You're a PhD-level student. PhD level. Like, I'm an ex-criminal that committed many a crimes and did a lot of time. I figure myself to be pretty good within the mental status of committing crimes and figuring it out. Right. And I wouldn't be PhD-level. Like, I'm not that good. So everything you know, within the planning of this failed, right? Yet the carrying out of it was perfect. No, that, that doesn't exactly, make sense. exactly. And that's the thing, you know, because a lot of people say, "Well, he knew, he studied this. This was his area of education." But that doesn't mean he could do these crimes. That you know, right. just because he studied crime does not mean that he could pull these crimes off. And, and I, I think, think there's a big difference between, you know, studying this in class and and actually committing these crimes just yeah. because he and knew, I you know, I don't I don't think that yeah. gave him the capability. I to tell these people crimes. I tell people from a criminal way of doing things. There's two types of people that commit crimes. You got the dummies that think just because they've seen it done or they've read a book, they can go break into a home and methodically get out of there without leaving any evidence. And it's, yeah, but you've never done it. You've never experienced it. You've never right. gone through the stages of actually learning. So when someone says, yeah, he studies criminology, he's a PhD level student, he's read every book possible, he's talked to so-and-so, that means nothing. You've never no. done it. It's the that emotional PhD, chaos, the nervousness. That PhD is gonna. That PhD is gonna mean nothing when he gets inside that house. It, it's gonna mean nothing, you know, nothing. when he gets inside that house. I just. Well, don't, I mean, I you don't, think I don't about it, it for for all the people that have found him guilty already, and they say he was studying all this time to be able to accomplish this. Then why did he fail miserably walking out of his home? Right. Just leaving right. his apartment was the first failure. You right. are seen by law enforcement cameras around your own apartment, getting into your own car, leaving around the time the so-called crime is happening. You're right. leaving, and then you methodically drive and hit every camera to come right back to the same spot, leading people right back to your home. None of right. that adds up to a criminal mentality. Not, not, not at not all. And, but but you, like you said, you know, what's so strange is that, you know, he drops the ball from the time he leaves his house. So from the time he leaves his house, he's destined for failure. So he leaves his house, right. but then he ends up 
going in and pulling off a quadruple homicide in less than 10 minutes that I, you know, that it, 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 that's strange. It's strange that, you know, he doesn't seem to know what he's doing in the beginning, but once he gets in the house, all of a sudden he's, you know, he's good to go. That, that doesn't make right. sense at all. And that's not the way crime works because once you get into the house is when everything goes awry from plan. You can't plan what actually happens when you get into right. the house, and it never goes as planned, and it's right. never perfect. Right. It's a mess, especially think lucky, a quadruple homicide. Quadruple homicide in that short of a time frame, and you're saying that you could do that knife. so methodically – and leave nothing and leave nothing leave you know nothing. i i said from the i would have left beginning, my own blood i would oh oh yeah for sure yeah i mean that there would have been yeah. you know especially if they say that you know kaylee was fighting that she possibly pulled off the sheath and stuff like that you know if, if there was that much fighting going on if they were really battling inside that house that he definitely left a trail there there's no way that he uh, didn't hey. leave some sort of trail just add it all up. If if you're fighting for your life in a battle like had to have happened in that home, right? Is your face mask still going to be perfectly on your face when you're no. walking to get out the back door in front of an eyewitness that could flame your bushy eyebrows and everything about you? Your face mask is still going to be perfectly in place. That's not possible. Well, and I'm you're sorry. Not in to, all know, of that action. Yeah. Well, it seems like the first thing you would notice is the big knife and you would notice they were covered in blood. You know, that's that's yeah. the thing and is that, you know, I feel like I feel like it I feel like it would have been risky for one person seeing all the cuz I can tell you right now. If I'm looking at this house and I'm looking at six cars or five cars whatever was parked out front and I know that there's multiple people inside, I I I'm not going in with just a sharp-edged blade. I'm definitely, oh. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I'm definitely going in with something else as well in order to contain right. the situation if things go bad. Because if all you have is this sharp-edged blade and things go sideways, you're screwed. And I'm sorry, at the end of the day, in my planning, because that's, you know, where we're at in this first video. And this is awesome. I mean, you and I are going to have weeks of talking about this because there's right. so much to dissect. But right. if we're figuring planning of the Idaho Fork front, and I, I guess I could sum it up this way so that we don't take 45 minutes to, you know, <laughs> first video. But are you going to feel confident with one K-bar knife unless your plan was one person? Like you right. felt as though you were going into something – that was individual living area. You're not going to have a whole group of people around you. I always right. knew when I looked at some sort of crime, whether it be breaking into a home or what it was, I had to prepare myself for what I'm walking into. Right. So if I felt as though it was a bigger crowd, I shied away from that, or I prepared and planned myself better for that situation. Right. There is no way... And I'm walking into a home, like you said. He had to have driven by the front of that house and seen the cars all lined up. You know right. those people are in that home. You know they're in there. Because from what they say, he drove around this home for 30 minutes watching the lights go out. You know people are there. Why didn't he get out and I walk? I just shied away. You know, I don't understand why he didn't get out and walk. There was plenty of students walking around at that time. You see it yeah. on the band. He could have video. parked his car anywhere. He could have Man. parked his car anywhere away from this and just strolled down the street smoking a cigarette. Even mm -hmm. if you don't smoke, you act like you do. You right. do whatever you can to fit in, not drive yep. circles to fit out. Now you've put yourself into the limelight. And of course... Now, here we are. We're talking about all the cameras that possibly caught him. But, yeah, you know, and we'll get into it later. Even the defense is saying none of the camera footage is one solid footage lined up with the audio. So can, now we're wondering, that. are you trying to piece it. all this together? 
You they know, are piecing it together. I think they're piecing it did, together all the way from Washington yep. State all the way to the King Roadhouse and then back again. And that's why everything looks so choppy because it, they're trying to piece together. This could be five different cars. You know, we don't know that this is that this is if they don't even yep. have a license plate. How do we know that this is the same car? And how do what's strange is. Why is it? I always thought it was strange that undercover law enforcement is in the area in a car that looks almost identical to the car that they're looking for. All right. You I know, that, just want strange. to know at the end of the day, we're trying to figure out the why to launch or the reasoning behind it, the planning concept of all of this. Did right. law enforcement look at any other vehicle? That we've all seen in footage. We watched it. We saw it. We saw the black right. truck. We saw the other car. We see the cop car. We see vehicles moving. Show right. me that you did the same due diligence on those cars. Show me right. their past for the night so that we as the people can figure out that makes sense. That right. makes sense. Wait, that one doesn't quite make as much. And why did those two vehicles intertwine? Why did they stop next to each other and talk for two? They're not giving right. us any of that. And they never have. Even prior to the gag order, they had every opportunity to do that. And they haven't done it. There's no explanation as to why a plan was supposedly made to commit this crime by a single individual that just happens to be a criminology major and PhD student. Odd right there, right? Oh, what a coincidence. Right. But right. there's no pieces to the actual plan. The actual plan that make any sense. No. None. Well, and if if you think about it, in the very beginning, the way that it was reported and the way that they made it sound was that, you know, this was just this quiet, sleepy night and all these students were just sleeping. And, you know, this guy just crept right. out of the dark and, and came into the house. And then come to find out when you start looking at the Banfield footage and stuff like that, you start realizing right. this neighborhood was popping that night. There was It wasn't yeah. a quiet night at home. The, this neighborhood was active. There was people moving around this neighborhood, you know, big, as late as big after game 3 weekend, a.m. Man. Right. You know, and that's, that's, what, that's I, what's you know. strange to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what makes it so strange is that, you know, they made it sound a certain way. They kind of painted this picture for us. And then as the details began coming out, you start realizing that none of what they were talking about makes sense. You know, I, yeah, and, I, I and still. That's where, that's where oh, someone like you, a mind that breaks everything down. Like I do. We want to make everything as simple as possible. Let's understand this through simplicity, right. not so much by telling an overall story. We got to get it down to a simple, very, very direct forward way of thinking. And, you know, to surmise everything we've talked about, we focused on a man that supposedly planned a crime that is so big. Even the biggest of serial killers and people that commit these types of crimes would have been proud of this. This would have been their pride and joy type of crime. Right, right. And this right. man supposedly was so intelligent and methodical in a PhD criminology that he wanted to teach law enforcement and show them the way to do things. Yet he didn't know to leave his cell phone on his own nightstand. He didn't plan that. He didn't plan right. where to leave his phone, evidently. He didn't plan the fact that driving his own car would nail him every single time in a crime like this. So he right. didn't plan that. He, he only evidently in most people's minds planned the fact he was attracted to one of these females, which... I, I'm sorry, I don't see it, but okay, whatever. I, I, He's in I, I a don't, classroom. I don't see that either. He's at Washington State University. Don't tell me there's not females everywhere at Washington State University. What was it directly about these U of I girls that stood out to him? I don't, I don't right. see that. Right. But where in the heck, everybody says he's so intelligent and he lived his life to commit this very crime. Right. But the planning 
failed him on the night of the crime so bad he would have just put himself directly into view and got himself caught. I don't see right. it. I don't. No. I can't. No. Well, think about it. I mean, this guy went through the trouble. Well, first of all, you know, they think he ordered the knife on Amazon. That that right, right. there is is crazy enough. But they think that this that Brian Koberger had some kit, you know, and possibly changed his clothes and, you know, totally disinfected himself and everything else. But he drove his own car to the crime scene. That just it, to me, it it. it it sounds like they're talking about all of the steps that he took to protect himself as far as getting caught, but he was caught from the very beginning. If this was Brian Koberger, yeah. this, this was, he was, he was, and, and you know, that doesn't make sense. Don't forget lucky. He's, he's the man that planned so well in people's minds. He wrapped his own car in his shower curtain. You know, he, he literally had his steering wheel wrapped in saran right. wrap and all of this other right. stuff to not get blood in his car. But why even take your own car in the freaking first place? If you have to worry about protecting your car that much to get away from a crime like this, maybe you just don't take your car. Take another car. He could have walked someone, seven, Take someone else's car. <laughs> Lucky, how long you does know? it take you to walk a mile? To walk not a mile, long. how long does it take you? Ten it's minutes? Not long. Ten Maybe minutes, ten right? Minutes. So they yeah. lived they live seven miles away. If I were to walk that seven miles, which is a long walk, it's a long walk, yeah. it would take me the equivalent of two hours. Right? About two hours to walk that if I wanted to. Maybe right. some people could jog it, ride their bike, and you make it in 30, 40 minutes. Well, right. it's funny. He drove his car around for longer than that. He yeah. drove his car around for longer than what it would take him to literally walk to the crime scene, commit the crime, and walk away and never have his car or anything on camera. Right. Come on. What I Break don't it understand. down to simplicity. What I don't understand <laughs> is in the very beginning when when they got to the crime scene – you know, and the University of Idaho put out that vandal alert because, you know, they wanted they wanted the students and faculty to shelter in place. And then like 30 minutes later, they lifted that shelter in place. So it almost seems as though law enforcement Did they already knew know? something as soon they as already they have got them? there. They already had yeah. him. I think. Did you already I, and know I think who it was? Right. An informant, possibly, you know, I mm -hmm. that's, you know, in my opinion, I feel there's got to be some kind of informant. There's got to be some somebody that that had already sent uh, put them in the direction of Brian Koberger from the very beginning, because I don't believe they yeah. would walk into this crime scene, a quadruple homicide, and then tell the community that everything was safe. I just don't I, I don't see that. That doesn't make sense to me at all. And and I think that they knew something from the very beginning, and that would have been before they've seen this footage, you know, before they've seen any of this footage of Brian Koberger supposedly driving around, you know, they had already, right. I feel like they had already, they already had an idea, you know, whether I, think I, that's, I, I, uh, I don't think it had to do with the car. That's a very valid point. I think we'll save that to hook people on the next video because I've got some great thoughts on that one as well. And that that's a very valid point. Some to really think about because remember you and i both have heard the reporter state someone went to the hospital from that yeah. crime scene yeah Four deaths, and i actually i should one, have pulled him one up. to the hospital one to the hospital and you know mm -hmm. the thing is is that uh i i should have pulled him up i'll pull him up on the next video but i actually have screenshots from that reporter you know that she said in her in yep. this in this message she confirms that that is what she said and that that was that that wasn't aired because that was one of the aspects that law enforcement didn't want to talk about so i mean it's a great it's very conversation possible. yeah it's a great conversation that we're going to make people wait for <laughs> yeah we'll definitely we'll cover that one floor. next time yeah we're uh 40 minutes in. I think we've worn people's brains out, but we got to get back together and talk some more. We're definitely going to do it. And uh, we'll get together and, and we'll talk about en entering the house.
next time and, yeah. and, and some aspects of that. Yeah, we got to talk about how that so-called plan worked out getting into the home. <laughs> exactly. That ought to be interesting for sure. All right. Most well, I appreciate so. it, AR. And thanks for hanging out with me today. And Hey, uh, thanks for having me aboard. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we'll do it again real, real soon. Yep. Uh, All excellent. Right. I look forward to it, my man. We'll see you all next Bye. time.